Hi folks. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I was planning on making a new front panel for this thing and to that end I got hold of my, for myself one of these four line um, it displays volts, amps, watts and watt hours or some such um, nice blue backlit thing. So I thought I'd build a new front panel with a panel meter, power socket, we'd have a IEC power outlet as well and perhaps some terminal blocks um, proper power inlet and hey while we're at it why not throw in some switches for uh, turning the power on and off to the unit and output power so we get full control so I thought I'd put together something with uh, all of those bits to replace this front panel Now, I'll just show you why I dislike this front panel so much. I mean, the first thing that's wrong with it is it means you have to have uh, ultimately unsafe things such as this kicking about the place so that you can get the power actually into the terminals and then if you trip over it or yank the wires for some reason you've got the mains kicking around possibly short-circuiting. So I just don't like that on the input terminals for starters. But it does actually have another issue as well. And if the... Uh, do a two second tear down job done there we go um, yes I have already disconnected the wires inside there's just three wires the uh, neutral power in and on the yellow is the wiper contact inside there um, anyway these screw terminals have a an issue that uh, apart from being as nasty as can be and just having a couple of washers there to sandwich the wire in there's not even a proper insert back plate on the um, moulding at all so it's just a couple of washers to sandwich the wires in but also because these uh, are capped off there's um, a secondary problem that the screw isn't actually long enough to uh, make it all the way so when you try and tighten them or loosen them it actually unscrews the terminal itself from the back and these were just spade terminals um, screwed in there so the connections were forever coming loose it wasn't actually possible to tighten the thing properly so down to business I got this panel meter and uh, this panel meter runs 80 to 260 volts or thereabouts but of course my variac goes from 0 to 260 is it? Uh, yeah 80 to 260 um, so I needed a way of actually getting this to run all the way down to zero. So let's crack this open and I'll show you what I've done inside here. There we go. So here is the circuit itself and I'll um, move the camera for this. So this panel meter um, there's four connections on it, the centre two are the volts coming in, power coming in and then you attach a load on the outer two and it, uh, well it's actually just got a bridge between let's call it neutrals there, um, connecting them through and then there's a one ohm resistor in the circuit that's used to measure the current that's actually flowing um, and in fact, so Having a look at how this worked, I, I did pull it to pieces before and um, looked at the schematic for it. But what we've got is we've got our input power on these two centre pins and it comes through um, current limiting resistor and then we come in through these sets of resistors here and into this chip which is where we're making all the measurements. And the same we've got our current sense resistor was think it was tucked up here um, oh no it's there there's our current sense resistor there and the value from that again traces its way along through another potential divider here and into that chip for measurement um, that chip itself gets its power from these voltage regulators here which is a 5 and a 3.3 volt voltage regulator and those voltage regulators are getting powered by this capacitor dropper circuit here, just this resistor capacitor diode combination here which is just letting a little bit of power flow through each time the AC oscillates back and forth. So 
to separate out the power supply I just lifted up one leg on the capacitor which was previously connected into the mains here and I've strung a separate wire on there which means I can run that off the 240 volt input whilst we're measuring the outputs from the variac on the other pins. So um, I was quite pleased with that little hack because it ended up being very simple. Just um, lifted one leg out of the circuit board, soldered a wire on, heat shrunk, glued it in place and uh, trimmed a tiny wedge off the case there to make room for the wire. So anyway, I needed to take that to pieces mostly because I need to take that off now. Now I can reassemble it. So, having got the panel meter working, the rest of the job was just going to be 3D printing some kind of enclosure for all of these bits and gubbins, well, not the screwdrivers obviously, and all of these bits and gubbins. So, um, I started off just to work out my measurements and just printed a simple Patris box um, so I could check that the screw connections would work, which they wouldn't because the holes were too small and I'd got the depth right, which I hadn't. But, um, moving on from that one. I then put together the flimsiest prototype I could um, which would combine for me the socket on the front, my panel meter, yes it was very flimsy, it fell to pieces but it didn't really matter, um, and that let me, let me get an idea of how much space I'd actually got to work with inside for adding things like switches and the sockets and terminals and that kind of thing. So it let me work out my component placement um, and it also let me try things for size which was uh, where I discovered this was actually about 10 centimeters taller than 10 centimeters taller than the Variac itself. So um, moving on from that one we go on to the kind of first attempt at a proper design and uh, making sure all the components had actually fit and um, it didn't turn out too badly, there were a few problems. I'd cut the uh, s holes for the power switches incorrectly so um, I had to trim them up with a knife and uh, I'd somehow or other in cut and paste managed to miss the bottom off that IEC socket but other than that we're about right. So we're not terrible here, but there were still a few issues, um, first of which is this panel meter now hits this bar along the back here, so I have to do a slight redesign for that. Um, that was it for the major problems. So anyway, I've got the next version printing at the moment, and when it's finished I'll um, put all this together. and. Uh, Yes, the next version is also optimised for printing a bit to reduce the amount of support material and things like that. But um, I'll turn the camera back on again when I've got the next version done and we'll uh, see it working. OK, so this is what I hope will be the final version of this. It seems to have printed quite cleanly. So I'll uh, tidy up all the infill. I did my mesh infill on that gap again to make sure that was supported, but we're all looking good. So I'm going to clean it up and then put some parts in. Right, after an exceedingly long time doing very fiddly connections because there's no space to work in, I think I've got the wiring for this all worked out. Um, I'm not going to provide a wiring diagram because if you're messing around with mains voltage and you can't work out how to wire input and output sockets, you probably shouldn't be. But um, needless to say, this was not designed for manufacture. So I've got the three terminals from the Variac itself, the two inputs and the output on those plugs and they correspond to there. These three wires go to my socket front and um, I think I'm ready to put the screws in and see if it all works. So here we go, ready for the switch on. Switch on the input power and our display works and our output's currently one volt because it doesn't actually vary down to zero using no watts, no amps and we have used 10 watt hours in the past and I can crank the voltage up to whatever I like and nothing happens until I turn on 
the thing that enables these output sockets and I've got my 100 watt lamp there so there we go working nicely and uh, this socket's got its own power switch so the one on the side doesn't do the one on the front as well but if I crank it up to 240 volts it'll probably wash the camera out but um, you can just see it is indeed a 100 watt light bulb so yep pulling 0.41 amps so, really rather pleased with that and, uh, And that gets me on to my next project, which has been waiting in the wings, which is uh, sitting here, and you'll find out more about that in a future video. Alright, cheers folks, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, bye!